Welcome to Power Up Podcast, the podcast that seeks to empower and dismantle, giving us the power and confidence to question, deconstruct, rebuild and expand in life. I'm your host, Amma Rouge, voiceover and multidisciplinary artist, well-being advocate, food and book geek with over 14 years of movement-centred experience. I am your host, Ella Mesmer, artist, choreographer, yogi and coach with a passion for alchemy, creativity, transformation and workplace wellness. We recognise that we can't dismantle and empower or be empowered without first learning ourselves, diving deeper to unlearn the harmful, restrictive and unprogressive. It's an ongoing practice and journey for us all, which is why we created this podcast. Our show features guests doing the work to enlighten, deconstruct and power up in their own magical ways. We're going to be having conversations around the power of healing, transformation, well-being and creativity and how they feed our personal and collective evolution, how they help us power up. Welcome to our fourth episode themed around play. Ella and I have been talking with many different beautiful humans about play, how it features in their lives, how we can make this a summer of play, what our barriers to play are, and how play builds resilience in us. Today we're joined by the wonderful Brian and the awesome Sammy. We're going to break down who they are, what they're doing, and how play features in their lives. Thank you so much for coming to speak to us today. So firstly, Brian. Brian is an artist, a confluencer and jack of all trades from New Jersey. Whilst going to school for biology, he started a career as an actor and model in New York City, which ultimately led to a long running position at Ralph Lauren. Working client relations for the brand eventually led to an event coordinator position at their flagship restaurant, The Polo Bar, which abruptly came to a long pause due to the pandemic, as many of us have experienced. Last August, as a regular participant of the Burning Man Festival, he discovered a wonderful new startup called Topia, one of the handful of platforms chosen to host the event virtually. The experience reignited and reinvigorated his fondness for collaborative play. It was so intoxicating that after the event had finished, he stayed on the platform and continued engaging and collaborating with the fledging community using it. This led him to becoming an official ambassador for the platform, inspiring people daily to create, play, nurture their own communities and help them build new ones. During the month of August, he's working on inspiring creators and communities in the run-up to Build a Burn, which is the virtual Burning Man festival that will occur on Topia. He's also helping our Wunderbar Elemesma with a wonderful interactive theatre project, which is happening in September. (laughs) I'm so happy to be here. (laughs) We also have joining us the amazing Sammy. Sammy is a sustainably conscious designer maker based in Leeds. She runs Just Love It Design, where she pours her heart and soul into creating branded or personalized products for weddings and events. She is also a workshop instructor and loves teaching people how to make their own products too. Her side brand, Makers at the Mill, is all about inspiring and empowering people to work practically and creatively. Sammy believes that creating products for yourselves or for others is the key to well-being and happiness. Sammy will be launching a monthly Makers subscription box in September, where Makers will receive a box in the post which contains a product of their own to build, along with other treats. And I have experienced one of these, and they are amazing. Makers will be given the opportunity to build and decorate their product on their own or jump onto a virtual event where they can meet Sammy and other subscribers to build a community of like-minded people and share creative thoughts. Whoop, 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 whoop. Welcome, Sammy. Thank you so much, gorgeous ladies, and Brian as well. And um, thank you very much for this opportunity and asking me to come along today. Such a joy, and I love the the kind of like this interweaving web that we have in this space. Um, when we open the session today Brian said I know that voice of Amma's voice who featured in a topia world that Brian built for me and Sammy was involved in that project and has now been hosting these wonderful events on topia and has met Brian and so on so just beautiful beautiful spiders web 
So I would love to ask you both some more about play in your work and why play is so important. Sammy, you mentioned that you believe it's actually really important for people's well-being. Can you expand? Yeah, so um, for me, definitely kind of being playful within my work is really important. As a product designer, you're constantly kind of um, playing around and kind of upskilling yourself. And I find that if I'm in a workshop environment with other designers and other makers, there's so much kind of skill sharing and collaboration going on. And it just leads to kind of improvement of skills and also um, experimentation as well. And when you play, it really kind of engages the right side of your brain, which um, kind of encourages creativity which kind of helps you kind of come up with new new problems or seeing problems differently and you come up with creative solutions. And so why I kind of created Makers at the Mill is um, encouraging people to actually build their own products, either with me in my live workshops or doing it virtually online as well. And you know what? There's so much kind of, oh, just so much happiness and so much well-being involved in that. Because at the start of the session, because I've been doing working with businesses to do these, and quite a lot of the time people go to me, Sammy, I'm not creative. I'm just a lawyer and accountant. I sit at a desk all day. I'm not creative. I don't expect anything from me. And then by the end of the event, they're like, look at what I've done. This is incredible. <laughs> and it's that confidence piece. And you're like, well, where were you two hours ago saying all this? And actually, it just makes people happy and that fuzzy feeling inside. And you cannot, you literally cannot pass it on to anybody. You've got to kind of get them to go through that creative journey mm. and explore and, and then they kind of bring it out in themselves. And it's that feel good factor. And I think it's, again, making something for yourself. Uh, people don't do enough of it, I don't think. And um, I think we should do more. And it's just, yeah, that wonderful feeling as well. And you've got something like, I did that. Even if yeah. you give it to somebody else, you're like, I've done that. And that's mm-hmm. such a good feeling. Everybody should do more of it. That's my little mission. <laughs> I love that. And I actually love what you're introducing um, soon, which is... It's my monthly Makers Club subscription box. Yes. Yes, I love that idea because it's going to arrive and it's just going to open that space up for play every month. You know, so even if they're not finding their way there, it's like you're giving them the opportunity to dive into it. And then there's always like, oh, my God, what's going to be in there? And then the fact that they can link up with other people in in the community virtually is just like another layer on top. I love that. And like, because I'm a big people person and I was like, I would like to do a subscription box, which really kind of ties into, I get to design new products every month. And Mm. I get, I really found a passion in the last six months with doing these um, online creative wellbeing workshops. And I've actually found a passion for designing products that anybody can put together and then Mm. paint and decorate. And so this is for me following that kind of new line of passion. And so getting people excited about what they're going to make. But also the main thing for me is I want people to connect to other people and meet new people all over over and actually kind of do a little bit of networking but getting to meet new people and just having a bit of a giggle because that's what play is all about isn't it and that, that's yeah that's really important to me so thank you mm. I've um I've been facilitating an event or a project today with young people and there was a lot of the word I can't and a lot of kind of shyness at the at the beginning of the day and it was really lovely to see at the end um like one of the amazing facil- facilitators said we're not going to have that word in this space and um just seeing everyone you know everyone having a go but also realizing it's like often the thing holding us back is the fear and when we can get out of the way of that actually we can just create and and create connections with other human beings as well and that's a beautiful thing right and I think it does I think as adults as well we're not kind of I think we're a bit scared of being playful aren't we because we're like oh we don't want to be seen as like because we're like successful people or we can't be playful we can't Mm. be childish but actually who cares what people think being playful is is amazing and it just yeah makes you just a happier person Brian can we point that to you? It was really interesting to read kind of your journey in terms of Burning Man and, you know, how, what you've learned about play in this very different format to Sammy of play online. And how has that kind of, what has that taught you working with Topia and this journey since Burning Man? Play is kind of an interesting concept because 
you don't actually lose it. You don't actually lose that childlike wonderment. I feel like society kind of forces you into like, oh, hey, you know, you, you go to university, you go into the workforce, you, you're like, oh, no, that's like, like, n- you know, not something in my life anymore. But like, it always is there that like seed of like, really great creativity and collaboration is always there. And um, attending Burning Man, uh, it kind of like in, really did reinvigorate uh, that like sense of play, that sense of like wonderment and just like um, amazing creativity that's like around us all. But it like we don't necessarily like allow ourselves enough to to just happily um, create, collaborate, enjoy like like literally enjoy people's like artistic mistakes or or uh amazing like creative follies that actually turn into just like inspirational um activities events and um going to burning man for the first time seeing kind of like artists uh, unbound by you know um uh you know making art for somebody else and things like that and kind of just enjoying the creative process of of allowing themselves to create something that's really meaning for for them but also kind of like a uh an amazing jungle gym of of things where um uh if nobody's ever um heard of burning man before it's you know this wonderful festival in the middle of the desert in nevada um and basically it's every everything's everything is harsh uh basically it's the middle of the desert but like um 80 000 people come and it's basically kind of like a big picnic um for an entire week people are just allowed to to have fun to to see that sense of um wonderment um, um, in in their eyes and, and other people's, and kind of just revel in it. And it's it's interesting, um, kind of working with Topia now. Um, you see that from people because um, people actually enter a space. So you have a little bit of an avatar, and you're actually able to walk around um, the space. Um, everything is kind of like a virtual diorama of any type of space you can think of so you could be kind of walking around in a forest or um when we did um la your show we were kind of like in this wonderful jellyfish um fantasy and it, it's great because you can actually embed um spatial audio so you can actually have wonderful like cinematic music or you know little sound bites here and there you can have um wonderful embedded videos and things like that so honestly people have been using it for for every every way (laughs) just to have like a really great amazing and playful meeting between friends between colleagues coworkers, literally people who have uh, never met before but it's all kind of done in a um, structure that encourages play that encourages creativity that encourages remembrance because you know when we play and we have a wonderful time those are the uh, points in life that we remember the most. We remember the joy that um, we had, not only doing the activity, but the joy that we had with people who then became our friends. I was just thinking about the accessibility as well. I mean, I think there's you know, probably elements of you need to be able to access a computer and access Wi-Fi and so on. But I just love with what you, what you do that people can join anywhere you know you you don't have to get dressed up you don't have to um for example have lots of money you, you know it can just be this thing that you come and you participate in and and you create and you like there's a moment in um the previous show we did you know when we were playing um chase on the beach <laughs> like oh yes <laughs> it's just so wonderful that you can create you can be so silly and creative yeah. and like seeing like the giggles on people the, the joy that that was creating in adults of like, I'm doing that, but actually it's this little avatar in this little wonderful world. <laughs> and, and it's wonderfully infectious. Um, yeah. When you, when you see kind of people just it, like enjoy other people's um, company and just kind of enjoy the excitement that they're getting from what they experience. Mm. Brian, everything you've been saying reminds me of something that Adele said 
way back in the very first episode of this series about play and she said when children are given the time and space they will naturally play and not even only children but humans you know so when we're given free time and we're given space we will play and whether that free time and space is in a virtual virtual place or whether it's you know here and now in the present with people around you it just shows that when we're afforded that we then go oh I have permission to do this and like you said that kind of ripple effect where everyone is kind of um kind of the joy is growing as a result of everybody else's joy I think that in itself as well then makes people feel more confident to play because we were talking a little bit about fear and play and fearfulness to play. And Adele also mentioned that there's a lot to do with how confident someone is in whether they feel like they're able to play or not. And so I do feel that confidence comes into it. But when we see other people uh, enjoying it and other people joining in, it feels like it gives us permission to do the same. And I think people become a little bit less um, inhibited when people come to my workshops I'm doing them online I find that people do kind of they're quite like oh I'm not quite sure what's going on until you get them like creating and making something then suddenly they're just chatting away and they've all got something to chat about and it's yeah it's brilliant to kind of see that so yeah I think kind of being playful just allows that kind of again that collaboration that teamwork and that confidence building as well and take the fear away get rid of it and what I was just thinking about Sammy of what you do so well is often like I meet a lot of people in, in for an example today I met a, a, a wonderful young dancer who was like oh I can't I can't make up my own stuff I have to you have to just tell me what to do and then I'll do it and I think what you do it's like you give them the framework so they can't you know they can't say that stuff and therefore not participate but then there's there's all of the kind of the possibility that then they make their choices and the more that they're kind of doing it the more that they're discovering or the more that they're realizing that actually it lives in them which is totally aligned from a Lion King song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and I think that's um what I do say to people is because our our um sessions the creative well-being sessions that we do um a little bit kind of background is it's all kind of wooden flat pack products that I I send out to people so everybody kind of starts off we do a construction like do this do that do this do that and you'll end up with a product and then it's how you decorate it it's how you personalize it, it's how you make it your own how you blend your paint and with that, I just find that um, people kind of, it's not a blank canvas. If you give people a blank canvas, they panic and go, oh, I'm not creative, I'm not creative. And then if you, if you give them like a product, like, right, paint it, make it your own. And actually they're like, oh my gosh, I've done it. Oh, look at this. I've got this. I've done this with that. And oh, all of this has come to. And yeah, and it's brilliant seeing people's kind of thought processes. And you don't have to be a brilliant artist to be creative or to play, do you? You've just got to just go and do it and enjoy it. And it doesn't matter if, if it's, looks terrible by the end of it as long as you've had a good time that's what I say anyway. right yeah and I mean like just for the for the listeners Sammy is right now sitting in her workshop space which is so exciting there's a laser cutter on one side there's a shelf full of amazing things that Sammy and and creators and workshop experiences have made and there's just so much creativity right there and there's so much possibility to discover as you make one of those. It is a lot of fun. Yeah, this is my little inspiration space. Um, so, yeah. I do. And actually, to be fair, I know that I'm a creative person, right? But I think it's really important. I take creative breaks throughout my day because I know we can get a little bit zoomed out, mm. get a little bit bogged down with work. Mm. I make sure that I take a creative break, either 10 minutes or kind of throughout the day or maybe half an hour at lunchtime. I just sit and paint or just do whatever, just to kind of just really. Yes, I love that. Oh my gosh, I would love to come to that. It feels to me like there's a connection with meditation that we go into. And it, it is, isn't it? It's the creative state of flow that we're essentially accessing with, with all of these things. It's like you forget who you are for a moment. You forget your identity and you're just in heart space and in connection. It's just beautiful. I've been a resident of, um, of the Pervasive Media Studio, which is a, a space in Bristol for kind of creatives that want to use technology. But for me, when I discovered Topia, this is when I really like, it just took things to this next level of play online. It's just, and like when Sammy came in, into the space, like, like, you know, this, this like, oh my God, you could do this. And like, just how we all we, it's like we all kind of raise the vibration constantly by being together in the space of like, and this could happen and this could happen. And now, you know, the 
the world that we created, it's next level. It's it's incredible. Yeah, I mean, it, no, it was it, it was so wonderful um, creating with you. But that like that that childlike wonderment that you see from people to be like, oh, what is this? It's like if if I could only um, you know do that with all of these like you know video meetups that I've had with my friends or or for work and things like that, where like a sense of play was part of the conversation. And that brings us on to this whole theme of a summer of play and we're asking as many people as we can what tip would you give to other adults about how they can be playful this summer allow yourself to experience something new um allow yourself to like act like a kid think of what you really really wanted to do like when you're five years old Mm. and like do a little bit of that and sammy what about you lovely I would definitely kind of resonate what kind of Brian said and kind of go and do like take the fear away go out and do something new and exciting and just you never know it might kind of spin off into a completely new avenue for you and you might walk into the autumn or winter doing something completely different that you didn't think you were going to be doing before. And speaking of the summer of play, we have our summer of play competition very nearly over. We will be selecting the winners on the 31st of August. All you need to do is go to our Instagram channels, that is powerup.podcast or amma.rouge or Ella Mesma, and you will find the post about this competition. And it's very easy to enter. You will win a wonderful book, Children Don't Dissolve in the Rain by Adele Cleaver, as long as you're based in the UK. It's an amazing book. Check it out, everybody. Have a wonderful summer of play. Thank you for listening. You can connect to us and our guests via the links in each episode's show notes. Before you go, we invite you to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of the goodness to come. And if you enjoyed today, perhaps tell a friend to tell a friend. We are always grateful for you, our listeners, for our fabulous guests, and to everyone who has contributed to and been a part of our journey here. Our music is by Tom O'Carter. Everything else is brought to you by us, the Power Up our team. I am Ella Mesma. I am Amma Rouge. And, and we, we are Power, Power Up, Up Podcast. Podcast.